Hello and welcome to our series of Praying Through the Bible. Today we're going to finish James. Uh, we've been reading the first few chapters and today we're on to chapter 5. So we're going to read that in a moment, but first let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we finish this book, would, we, would it have been a blessing to us? Would we have taken something from each chapter, from each verse? Would there be something which impacts us in any way which you will it, be it challenging or encouraging or emphasising or reminding us of something we have known. Lord, as you finish this book, would this chapter be a blessing to us also? Amen. Let's read James chapter 5 together. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have a hoarded wealth in the last days. Look for wages and you fail to pay the workmen who mowed your fields, are crying out against you. The cries of harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of the slaughter. You have condemned and murdered innocent men who were not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. Patient he is. I'm sorry. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming near. The Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the fake sufferings, in the face of sorry, in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not even by heavens or earth or anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no, be, and you know no, or you will be condemned. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise uh, him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring him back. Remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Let's go into a time of prayer.
Heavenly Father, this first passage is about rich people. We started talking about how wealthy people condemn themselves with their wealth. Father, I may not be rich, but I'm certainly not poor. I live in a wealthy part of the world. I'm very fortunate in so many, so many ways. Father, if I am sinning in my wealth, I am sorry. Father, if I have withheld money, which I could be using to help people, I am sorry. What I have, Lord, is yours, rightfully. I offer it back to you. I have any resources that you can use, Lord. Would you use them for your glory? Next passage tells us about your coming. Verse 9 tells us the judge is standing at the door as if you are waiting for it to return at any moment. Father, we long for your return, but also terrified for it. Father, a lot of this book has talked about your judgment. And if we judged on our works, then I fear what I deserve. I, must, I am so reliant on your mercy and your grace. This seems to be written to people who are going through a time of persecution. It talks about uh, their, their patience through in the face of suffering. Father, help us to have patience in any suffering or persecution we face. Help us in those moments to look forward to your return. Father, the final part of our passage talks about coming to you in all circumstances. Verse 13 says... Is there any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call an elder of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Lord, help us to come to you in every single circumstance. Inspire us to uh, come to you with even minor problems, major problems, with times of praise and joy. Help us to come to you in our anxieties and worries. Help us to come to you in our struggles and our burdens. 
Help us to come to you in every single circumstance in our life. Lord, help us to build each other up. The verse also talks about uh, confessing your sins to each other, and praying for each other. You may be healed. Lord, that's, a, that's a something I find personally challenging. When I fall into sin, I feel embarrassed. The last thing I want to do is share it with another person. And yet every time I have talked to one of my brothers in Christ and told them I'm struggling with this sin, I've fallen into that. I felt uplifted by it. Father, help me to have the, the confidence in you to always be willing to share in my weaknesses. As much as I wish I didn't have any. Lord, help me to help help all of us to find people who we can confess to, who we can uh, be encouraged by and challenged by, who we can talk to and. Help us to have the courage to share in our weaknesses. The passage ends by saying, my brother, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from error from the error of his way will save him from death, cover over a multitude of sins. Oh Lord, would Lord we ask for a revival that millions of people across the world would turn back to you. Father, help us to uh, Bring people back to the truth of you. Help us to convert the masses and convert the individuals. To reveal to people your love and grace. Help us to tell people just how good you are. Father. I feel like evangelism is something that I don't see done well very often. And yet it's our duty to spread your good news. It's certainly something I don't feel like I do well. But Lord, I want to. I want to bring people to you. I can think of tons of people in my life who I would love to know you. And I pray that they would. And I pray that anything I can do any way that you can use me to bring your grace into their life, Lord, use me. I'm here to be used. Thank you, Father, for this book. Thank you for the book of James and for the encouragement and challenge it is to us. Father, I pray in our time that we read it together and have been going through it here and praying it together, would we all have been encouraged? Would we all be built up? Lord, would we all come closer to you day by day and know your love and your grace more clearly. In your name we ask this.